Hi there! Today we're going to be doing a basic sew art video. I did one earlier, but I have better equipment now, so um, this one should be a lot more helpful than the last one I did. We're going to just do a basic image um, from the internet. I think the other one that I did was a basic shape. I don't remember, really. Off the top of my head. So anyways, here is the basic, or the sew art blank canvas, and we have it nothing it's an open canvas is free for us <clears throat> the file button um, it'll give you a new one so if you ever need a new screen you don't want to delete what you're currently working on but you have a new idea you can just open a new screen you can open old files that you've already done well actually I don't think you can I don't know what this is talking about <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I see. So you can open images from your computer, if that's cool. And I know I'm not claiming to be an expert on this program. I'm just, you know, sharing what I've learned from goofing off and doing stuff like what I just did. Just checking it out and seeing how it works. So one of the things I like to work with, let's get rid of this guy. Let's just start a new one. <clears throat> One of the things I like to work with whenever I'm placing things is the grid. It gives you a nice little gray background to look at. But my husband's not a big fan of the grid. He likes just blank canvas. The tools that we have, once there's an image in there, you can rotate it, reflect it, crop, resize it. <clears throat> the posturize is really cool. The wizard is really, really good too. I always forget to use it. I'm such a manual person. I like to do pick everything for myself. I'm very, not picky, but I just like it. Um, but the wizard is, is also very nice. Reduce colors is just the manual way of doing a lot of the bringing down the amount of thread changes you're going to need. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Merge colors, I haven't used very much. Actually, I don't think I've ever used that, so maybe we'll move off with that today. Um, paintbrush, pencil, fill region, eraser, shapes, convert to red work. I just recently figured out how to do this, and I'm so excited. <clears throat> I'm going to do a video on it later. And then the convert to stitches, that's the, the sewing machine up there. That's what that is. And the PAS editor, I believe, is... The tool that you can use to change the um, fill stitches so whenever you go into the stitch you can pick all kinds of different fill stitches and I think the, the pause editor is what you can use to create your own fill stitch options was the grid so you can change the grid all the different you can make it more personal how you want the grid to look to you. You can make the lines really dark. So that's really neat. Sorry about that. Units, you can change it from metric to imperial. Parity, you can be right-handed or left-handed. Canvas, languages, they only offer English. Um, new window, cascade, tile, and then these are the ones that I have open. The help button, there's a lot of cool stuff in the help topics. Um, I have never used the update now. It usually just auto, it gives me a notification whenever I open it. Um, you can restore your default. It gives you more information. And I've never really looked at any of this stuff other than the help topics. So let's go ahead and get started on something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's do... What's coming up? Mother's Day is coming up, so let's do a flower silhouette. There we go. Lots and lots of them. Let's do something pretty simple. Let's do that guy. Okay. Actually, I'm going to show you real quick how to do something that has a <clears throat> watermark on it because that's really frustrating whenever you're looking for something specific and there's very little out there on the internet 
and you just want it for something personal and you can't find it, everything has the watermark on it. It's really annoying. So first thing you do, get rid of that, is bring your colors all the way down to two. And boom, it's gone. No more watermark. So I don't want to use this image though. So let's open a new one. And I'll close all that stuff out later. I want to use that one right here. Coffee. And then we edit and paste right into our our program. I'm sorry if I move too fast and I jump ahead a little bit. Just got excited about <clears throat> showing you guys how to get rid of the silhouette. So if we want it to be a small flower, which I do, I realize the value in making smaller things, they stitch out a whole lot faster. So this looks really good, 40 by 40. It's about half the size, so it's probably about one and a half inches square. All right, so now that we have this guy in here, we can rotate the image. It doesn't look like it changes it much, but it kind of does. Um, we can reflect it. It doesn't do anything on this one, obviously. We don't need to resize the image, and we don't need to crop it. But if we wanted to, we would just do this, and then hit End Crop. But we don't want to do that, so <clears throat> let's bring that out there, hit End Crop, and Undo, because I don't want to change anything about the original. Alrighty, so we can posturize it. We don't need to but we can just kind of round out those edges, make it a little bit sharper. It kind of shows you over here what it will do. We don't need to do anything else with that. So we hit the posturize button again. That's the way to close the posturize screen. We can run the wizard. I can show you how to do that. Oops, let's get that closed. All right, so here's the original image. It's going to show us five colors, which is ridiculous. You see there's only two colors. So it's going to let us pick everything. And you don't want to go really drastic if you're doing something that has a lot of colors. Like if you're doing a picture of this guy, you don't want to immediately go to two colors. It will black out everything. So we just do it really slow, and it shows over here edit images of four colors. You really can't tell the difference. It's probably on such a small scale. Oops, so let's go back. So you just go three colors, three colors, two colors. You know, you kind of just go down the line as long as it doesn't drastically change your original image. So here's the original image, and this is merge colors. This is something, like I said, I've never used before. So 10%, this is what it looks like. You just keep going down. I know I want mine to be basically two colors, but this is the wizard, so. We'll just keep going until it doesn't change anything. So there's the original image still. And we're going to keep going, keep going. But we don't need to, really, because it's already at two colors. But the, the point is, is to start slow on whatever you're working on. You know, you know that it's going to be OK, then you just hit Finish. And it brings it up here. And then you can come over here and go to Stitch Image. and and this is the fun part. So here's the fill button. This is the whole inside of this and the whole inside of this. Fill. And you come over here. I wish that... No, I don't wish anything. I take that back. So here's the stitches that you can choose from. I'm actually going to... Let's get out of here. We're moving ahead. So the wizard is what we would do if we had something that had, you know, a lot of colors and we weren't really too sure about things or you just really like using the wizard, you think that's the way to go, I'm all for it too. I think it's great. I just forget about it. All right, so we did the color reduction. You want to double check your color reduction. And here's your brush if you want to go in here and, you know, make these fuller or add, you know, edges to them or draw something in the middle of there. You could use your brush. It gives you the freehand stroke. And you can choose the different widths, like... Like this is, let's go ahead and zoom in on it so it's easier to see. So I can draw stuff coming out of the side of it, you know, which I don't want, but I could. 
Um, and then you can also have really big ones. So it's kind of cool. Um, also, you can do just a regular line where it snaps and it also makes it very, very, very uh, straight. So you can do that. Here's where if you want to do your own filled rectangle. So let's make it, no, no. let's pick pink first <laughs> and then make it a rectangle. So if we wanted it to be filled like for whatever reason, the window in a car or something like that. And then here's a filled ellipse. So if we wanted to create our own flower over the top of this, we could do that. So that's what those do. And now over here in the pencil, it does the basically the sister of the brush. It's not, it doesn't do the opposite. It just does kind of the same thing, but a little bit differently. <clears throat> so your pencil tool, you know, it's very thin. Here's the, the ellipse, but you get the outline only. So that's pretty cool. And so like if you wanted to do that and fill the insides a different color, you know, however, you can make polka dots with purple, you know, pink in the middle and purple edges for your satin stitch or something. So you can choose the width of those. And then the rectangle. So you've got that. You can, you know, build cute little houses, with doors, and stuff like that. And I think that these can also help a lot in applique because you can just hit center line on them. But there's not a lot of guesswork that the machine has to make. Same with the pe or the brush. There's the line, you know, with the pencil, so you can get really nice straight lines. Maybe you can. <laughs> oh, there we go. And the freehand. So you can just draw to your heart's content. You can always undo everything. <clears throat> That's a really nice feature of SoArt. You can, you can pretty much undo everything that you do so you're not ever locked into anything. Okay, so in the color reduction, it should have gotten rid of that. Well, now it'll probably I don't know why that black is there. That's funny. Let's turn it pink. Oh, it's just a little glitch. It's not really there. That's why I couldn't edit it. Okay, so I'm going to turn it a light pink so that you can see the different stitches whenever we go over. And a light blue in the middle. I want to be able to stitch two things. Alright, so here's an eraser and it you know, you have to change the color of it. So basically it's another pencil, but you can have really big ones. You want to erase some of this stuff. Or you want to get really close in, you know. You can have really, really tiny. But you can do this with your pencil and your, your brush. And just change it to white or change it to whatever your background color is. You can change your background color as well. We wanted our background to be purple so that we can see this better, but we don't want to stitch it. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, and then here, here are shapes. These ones are pre-filled shapes. You get um, circle, triangle, square, diamond, and a bunch of other geometric shapes and stars and hearts. And I love the heart. <clears throat> it's one of my favorites. It's kind of hard to work with this sometimes after you've already pushed it. Um, it doesn't seem to be bothering on this one. But whenever you're clicked on it, you can change the insides. So, And it gives you a nice, fat, round outline for the stitching to happen on. Oops. Okay, so delete delete you can't undo those <laughs> oh. okay I got click happy there okay 
Okay. Alrighty. So you saw what the shapes did, and it's really endless if you, there's so many things that you can do with shapes. And I don't know if, oh, I won't go there. I'll tell you guys about paint at the end of all of this. So there's shapes, red work I just learned. I'm not going to show you right now. I'm going to make another video about that. It's kind of hard to wrap my head around it. And so it might take a little bit longer for me to explain it to you. So, but that is for red work and it's really, really cool. And here's your ultimate, where your end is. This is where you're headed for. So this is the stitch image. And this is where all the fun is. All that other stuff is just editing and getting it ready. But this is where it's really fun. So you come in here and you have fill, outline border, outline center line, applique border, applique center line. Right here you have this drop down menu. And in the drop down menu, you have all kinds of different fill stitches that you can put inside. And what that means is I can take this one that says apple and put a bunch of apples inside of this flower instead of it stitching out, you know, the, the traditional embroidery fill, I can put little apples in there. And in the tools that we were looking at earlier, the pause editor, PAS editor, I don't know why I called it pause, but I believe that that's where you can go in and make your own. That'll be another video for another day. So we can change it to anything in here. So let's see. That's kind of cool. Oh, I really like the cables. I think those are pretty. Sometimes you have to click it twice to get the other image to go away. So circles. <laughs> Middle polka dots. Little graph. Morocco's are really pretty. Musical notes. I really like that one. Um, you can just do cute squiggly. There's stars. There's two different kinds of stars. There's the star like if you were drawing it. <clears throat> and then there's star like unfilled. So just little fat stars. Hmm. <laughs> So there's all kinds in there, and it's really fun. I want to learn how to do my own, you know, fill stitch eventually. I think that just looks neat. And this one's just nice and classy. But let's just go with the regular default for now. It's a very beautiful default. Okay, and then we'll do the same with the middle. Okay. So in most cases, they'll do auto sip. Auto sew image works really great for simple images. So we go into auto, you can hit sew all colors or set transparent colors. Either way, we'll set it into motion to get it to sit, stitch. Oh, dang it. I really jumped it. I showed you how to do it manually. Now I'm going to show you how to do the auto sew. I'm so sorry about that. Oops. Okay, I want to clear the stitches. Auto sew is probably going to do what I did, but here you can hit set transparent color and it'll get rid of any blue and it just does all of what you did manually anyways. So everything right there is there and it'll do, you know, the underlay just fine and it won't bother with this out here color. So then whenever you're all done with your basic image, you go up here to file and save you can hit save and it'll probably save it in your documents area on your computer. Um, that's where mine is the default to. And even though it will bring it up whenever I click the save as, I still like having a little bit more control over everything because this just will save it as untitled in documents. And I want to be able to name it. So we go to save as. And it brings you up here into the documents library anyways. So, but for me, I have all of my information over here. Oh no, I don't. I'm doing it on my desktop. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So let's do a new folder and it will be flowers. Okay. And then we're going to do <clears throat> 40 by 40 
Cauliflower. JPEG. Oops. Let's not do 40 star. Let's do an X. Okay. And let's... The JPEG seems to be a lot more... It's just my favorite. I don't know why. Okay, so save. And this is just going to save a picture of what you're working on. And now it's going to go ahead and also create the... Um, <clears throat> The file that you'll need for your machine, mine is a brother, so it does PES. There's Genome, Singer, Tajima, Melco, Bernina, Viking, Faf, and Viking SE. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different choices that you can make on this or on this program. So this is our 40 by 40 flower. We're just going to keep the same name. Make sure down here the pattern size is what you wanted it to be. You wanted it to be, to be small. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. Okay. So that'll save it to your computer. And here, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's a very faint stitch out that shows you how it's supposed to look. All right. So now we're going to get it to our machine. We're going to go into computer. And we're going to go to the removable disk. Have to get rid of that. Excuse me. All right, we'll go to the removable disk, which is your machine. If your machine is plugged into your computer, it's going to be called the removable disk. Um, at least that's what it's called on mine. But you find it in the computer section, and it'll show, you know, anything that's plugged in as a USB. All right, so we're going into the removable disk, and sorry about that. Got a little hit on myself. Let's open up the folder contained flowers. And we're going to see it shows you the picture. And it gives you your PES file. And I'm not quite sure what a .saf file is. But this flower, this text is really cool. The text document, it tells you what the product name is, the number of different colors used in the sew out tells you the exact size it's going to be. Um, it'll tell you how many stitches it's going to be and what the color recommendations are based on what you chose whenever you hit file save. And I just always do the polystar. It doesn't really matter. I pick my own colors as I go. But um, you can copy and paste this, you know, into a different document to keep track of, you know, the items that you buy or, you know, the items that you're creating. Sorry, not buying. Okay, so that's really cool. So we're going to just go ahead and hit 40 by 40 flower.pez, copy. We don't want to cut it. And over here on our left hand side, we'll go down here to computer, and there's our removable disk in file F or drive F. Paste, and there we go. And then I'll show you in a moment how to get it. Well, it's on your it's on your machine now, but I will visually record getting it from the computer to the machine and and then we'll stitch it out. See you guys in a minute. Okay, I just wanted to stop the machine real quick and show you how nice the underlay looks. I don't know how well that shows up for you. Oh, so there's our stitch out. That's our little heart that, I mean, not a heart, I'm sorry. There's our little flower that we made. I used white and blue just for it to kind of stand out. But that's all there is to it, folks. Oh, you want to know what the back looks like? It's very nice. Very neat stitches back there. Alrighty, thanks so much. Have a great day.